Hello guys, so Gals of the Internet, I'm Supercast of YouTube and Twitch TV. I am so excited and so hyped. August 25th, 2022 is finally here. My most anticipated game of the year, F1 Manager 2022 has arrived. I cannot wait. I have been waiting for this game all year. I'm hugely excited, but I'm also a bit kind of like, this is going to be fun. And it's going to be fun because I'm going to be a complete noob. Um, I might end up finishing at the back of the field, qualifying at the back of the grid. This could be a hilarious fail. Anything could happen. Let's do it. Oh my god, this game, guys. I don't need to tell you how excited I've been for this. This has been the one I've waited for all year, pretty much. Um, and as I said in the Seven Chaos previews, I've never played a management game before. Today, for the first time ever, I'm stepping completely out of my comfort zone. And uh, for the first time in an F1 series, I'm not going to be actually driving for a change. It's going to be completely new. I'm going to get completely thrown off. And with all the data in this game, I'm going to get really overwhelmed, I could think. This this is going to be, welcome to day one on Manager, F1 Manager 2022, the most hilarious fails of all time. That's what this is going to be right now. Uh, I need to calm down, but I'm hugely excited. Uh, but let's, uh, let's see if we can get to it. Um, replace licensed music. I will do that right now. Yes, we will replace that, actually. Uh, so we don't get anything, because I will be streaming the game, so I think it'd be best if we replace the licensed music. So yes, that's, that's a good idea. Uh, I'm on PC, uh, as you can see. Um... Vsync on. Uh, I think we'll leave the brightness as it is, I think. That's what I generally tend to do. Uh, preset. I don't think this game's going to be, like, really taxing. We'll go Ultra. I think I can run Ultra, uh, according to the specs. The only thing I'm missing from the recommended specs is an i7, uh, but the minimum is an i5, so we should be able to run just fine. If we run into any stuttering or issues, then I'll switch it down to high. Uh, not closer when windowed, when full screen. I am going to be using the mouse and keyboard because this is, uh, I think this is, management games generally are mouse and keyboard games. Uh, but uh, luckily, Frontier devs have actually built it from the ground up for controllers. So it doesn't matter what platform you're on, you'll probably have as good a time as I'll have. Um, background noises during conversations, it will subtitles, mono audio. Use alternative color. Really? I guess this, this is for colorblind people, uh, which is nice. That's that's very nice, actually. Uh, we'll have all default. Like I've said, in pre I, I really should mention this in previous videos. I'll mention it now. If uh, if anyone who's subscribed does have a feature that they need me to turn on, uh, let me know and we'll do it. Uh, so this is the main menu. Um, I'm not looking at much, so I guess we go straight in with new career. So there's no single Grand Prix mode. That's that's. I was actually expecting that, but because you know this is all about the management style, and I think what their Frontier devs are doing is that they don't want you to get used to the mechanics of the game, and then you go into career and absolutely own everyone. Uh, so you actually get jumped straight in. So what this is going to entail today is going to be. Pretty much two videos. They're going to be very long, I would assume. And this first video is going to be the pre-race prep, uh, where I'm going to go through all the menus, look at the driver pool, look at all the vistas, try and get a feel for how we have to update the car and everything. I'm just going to look through everything, and then a second video is going to be the entire race weekend. Uh, obviously, I I won't do the entire thing because I think with the practice sessions that'd be three hours, qualifying would be an hour, and then racing two hours, so that'd be like that'd be many hours. So obviously, I'll cut that down uh, when we get there and uh, show highlights and stuff. So I had to skip forward because there was an intro movie that showed real F1 footage. Uh, so I just skipped it, and this is like the screen following that. And already looking at this game. Oh my god, the graphics. Now, they're not Naughty Dog quality graphics, but this engine is still sublime. Like, the driver models look almost real to a T. 
The graphics in this game are one of the best things about it, I think. And just the engine. Uh, looking at some other videos from the other content creators such as Arava, um, yeah, you can just see it through here. Like, look at Lewis Hamilton. He looks like almost like Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> it's quite, it's quite an insane game engine that uh, Frontier Devs have gone here. It was such a surprise to me uh, when they showed it. I was like, oh my god, this is actually much better than I was actually expecting. So just look at that. That's so real. It's awesome. Let's have a look at the front here. This is uh, obviously the overview. So let's see. Mercedes team ratings, best team rating in the game, uh, or one of at least. Season objective third. That makes sense. Constructors champion uh, long term objective with a high starting balance. Uh, yes, because there is going to be a lot of um, spending in this game, but you've obviously got to be mindful of for the cost cap. Um, but we're not even like in the tip of the iceberg of it yet, I don't think. So team performance, uh, Carmel and Mrs. Third. That's pretty realistic. So I think what I think what this is is pretty much pre-season testing. Or is it the most recent car performance? Because Mercedes were like in the middle of the pack in Bahrain. So this could be the most recent performance. Ah, Nick DeFreeze. Uh, and obviously these are all real people, so you've got Lewis Hamilton, George Russell. Nick DeFries has a phase, I don't think he did in the preview builds that Frontier did when they were streaming the game, so they've updated that, that's nice. Mike Elliott, Gerald Murphy, Peter, Peter Bonington and Ricardo Manscuni, they are the real race engineers. Pete Bonington is uh, obviously very well recognized these days. So they actually have real people, which is awesome, dude. Like, this is the entire team to a T. Every person is completely real. That's insane. And then obviously, yeah. So yeah, first entry in 1954. Uh, obviously, because they're one of the OGs, as is Alfa Romeo. Um, so, let's see. Rebel, we've got all the teams. I'm going to do what I would do in other F1 games, of course, we're going to go for Haas and we're going to really focus on Mick Schumacher. Haas joined F1 back in 2016 and they've had a good start to their team career, peaking at 5th place in 2018. Last season they finished 10th, but they spent a lot of time and focus on designing their car for 2022 and strategizing for the future. Going into the 2022 season, Haas hoped to have a strong car design under their belts. Coupled with hungry drivers, an ambitious team and strong leadership, they'll be pushing their performance and fighting their way back to the midfield. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, and I would say it's been a success. Uh, well, in 2021, it can't get any worse, right? <laughs> it was awful. Um, it's been much better this year. Mick has finally got off the mark in terms of points. Uh, Kevin Magnussen was I, was, I was really happy when they signed Kevin Magnussen. I thought he was perfect uh, for it. Um, yeah, Mick looks pretty accurate. That's pretty insane. I was looking at it and I don't, <laughs> I'm not sure about Kevin's face. Kevin's face looks a bit, a bit smaller than he actually is, but that could be just me. Um, so pretty much they're the lowest team on the grid. Uh, they've got a starting balance of low, but I think how the cost cap works is the lower in the team you get, the higher you get to spend. I think. I think that's it. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do what I would do in F1 21, 22, 20. It's gonna be uh, harsh because of the Mick Schumacher. Uh, let's see, car performance seventh, drive performance tenth. It's really harsh on K Mag. <laughs> Soft position fifth, and headquarters quality tenth. Yeah, that's that's pretty right. I would say. I think driver performance should be better, uh, especially with K-Mag in the team. So obviously, yeah, Mick Schumacher, Kevin Magnussen, Pietro Fittipaldi is the reserve. There is the man, guys. Gary Gannon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the most awesome race engineer. Uh, pretty much tied with uh, Lambiassi, who is uh, Max Verstappen's engineer. Ed Regan is um, the guy who was... Uh, uh, really couldn't get a word in edgeways when he was uh, managing Mazepin, I think. But yeah, the man Gary Gannon. I mean, if there is a if there is a couple of um, 
engineers that I say I would stan, as it were, would be Max's and Gary Gannon. Gary Gannon is awesome. Uh, and I, for one, hope that if Schumacher ever moves teams, he takes Gary with him. <laughs> that would be awesome. But yeah, we're going to go with Haas, uh, obviously because of Mick Schumacher. He is car one, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, I think, because I've waffled on a lot. Is this just... Excuse me. Oh, I was just checking if it's the same setting as this. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to waffle a bit. <laughs> oh. Okay, so you can have a profile. Wait. I've got an idea. Give me a second. We have to do it, lads. We have to be Gunter Steiner. Will it allow us to do it? Do you think? First time guidance. I guess that's a tutorial. We'll have that on. Will it let us do it? I guess so. We're going to be Gunter Steiner, lads. Brilliant. So it actually lets us do it. Nice. Perfect. So I'll do that Hi for there. the teams nice I pick. I'll just put the actual I'm Audrey Mensa, one principles of the team's in. Senior engineers. Okay. Welcome to the team. It's great to have you on board. See, I really like this menu. This menu is like really awesome looking. Everything is like nice and clear. So you know where you are. H is for help. Here at Haas, we've put a lot of energy into preparing for the upcoming season. Yeah. And you're joining us just at the right time. Now, let's get you shown around. As our new team principal, you're responsible for a lot of aspects of the team. Everything from managing our team's growth, overseeing our finances, and deciding on race day strategies will be in your hands. Mm -hmm. You can keep an eye on most things from your dashboard here. I can take you through it now. Okay. First up, an overview of the board. They're the ones who set the expectations for mm -hmm. the team. If they're confident in your leadership, you'll be fine. If they lose confidence in you, however, they might look to replace you. Naturally. <laughs> I'm probably going to get replaced after the first race. Who knows? The board sets season <laughs> objectives for the team to achieve. Reaching them will help keep confidence high. So be sure to familiarize yourself with what's expected. You'll want to keep an eye on the long-term objective for beyond this season as well. Mm -hmm. it says podium contender. That's pretty accurate. I would say that was pretty much almost doable, especially with K-Mag and Mick, very capable drivers. Okay then, let's look ahead to the race weekend. We need to start preparing for the next Grand Prix, which will be the first of the season. Mm -hmm. As it's your first day though, there's nothing urgent for you to address. Oh good. <laughs> Feel free to explore more, or you can select continue and sign off for the day. Once you do, time will pass, but don't worry about missing anything you automatically sign back in if an important event comes up. Ah, good to know. Okay. So let's have a look. Let's take a look around. Um, today we have aerodynamic testing period starts. ATR period 2 begins. Not sure what that means. <laughs> I'm going to have no idea. When we go into car setups and building parts and shit, I'm gonna have no idea what to do. This is why this is why it's gonna be a fail session. Uh, factory event in five stents. Uh, stents. Five days. I can't talk. Um, Preseason testing results and pre-season testing of Bahrain. Oh, so you do have a pre-season testing. You probably just don't take part in it, which is kind of disappointing. I do kind of wish they had a pre-season testing. To be fair. This weekend, season starts, or sponsorship obligation stuff. We'll probably look at that in a moment. Don't uh, forget so this to is the board, the board section. Often. You can monitor board confidence levels, your available budget, and your progress towards a greater team rating from here. Okay. So let's actually have a look at our budget. So we've got a, um, we've got a season budget of fifty-seven and a half million I guess that is right I I can't actually figure that out I think initial payment is like six thousand nine hundred I think I can't even read what that says it's so many zeros <laughs> monthly payment of four thousand. okay so the season budget is 57 that's probably not too bad um, we'll have to see what we can do from there 
rules and regulations. It's probably going to be nothing here uh, because we haven't started yet. Oh, okay, so it looks like the cost cap is 141 million two thousand. I think I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong. Um, oh. So yeah, regulations do change. Uh, I did, I did uh, hear that they will change regulations. I think there was like a uh, a bonus point for pole position that you could get. So it's pretty cool how you have a say in what regulations will come through. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see, board budget, team rating. I think we know what the team rating is. Oh look at that. So 2018, we were ninth for the point. 2019, zero points. 2020, zero points. 2021, zero points. Oh my goodness. Rating brand 410 underdog. Oh, here we go. Look, you see that? A team rating is a measure of how well a team has done in recent years. The higher your team rating, the greater the expectations that the board and sponsors will have. It would be much easier to get the greatest talents in Formula 1 to sign a contract with you. Team rating is based on teams' results in the past four drivers and constructors championship years. Teams also have a get a heritage bonus based on how many championships they've aired and how many they've won. Need. And we're the underdog because we're yeah. <laughs> House of really have uh, are a popular team to be fair. They they do have a very like popular underdog like status and everyone wants them to do well. Um I think we have an email here. So this is an inbox, you can have a check in the inbox regularly, important emails, and it's only for today, so we're good. Okay, um, how do we, um, okay. So we weekend preparation, we won't do that yet. This is your calendar for the Just month. look for all these bottom things at the bottom. Pay attention to the, the events that have been marked. The race weekends have already been added for you. More events will get added as the season progresses. Okay, fair. So what's this? This is the testing period. Okay, so yeah. That's easy to know. So we've got all the circuits, obviously. Um... Oh, look at that. Michael Schumacher still holds that record for Albert Park. Now, is this the updated Albert Park or is it not? I'm assuming it is. And by the way, um, one thing I actually found out is that the sprint races are not in this game. They didn't add the sprint races. Uh, so that's one less thing to worry about. So this will be from 2019 because that's when we were last here. It only goes back as far as 2018. Oh, that's a shame. Where's Where's Schumacher's winning 2000? And probably a couple other years for that matter. Is there other ones that can do that? Let's see. Yeah, they only go back so far. So maybe like 2018. I think this is because it's around the time that this era started. So they don't really count anything below that, I guess. So, yeah, it only goes back as far as 2018, so it's like the last four years. Oh, that's a shame. Well, we wanted to see Michael Schumacher, like, somewhere here. It's pretty cool how, like, how detailed it is. Where is, uh, there it is. There's the Miami GP. I'm trying to find out. Here we go. Um, so this will be the first corner. Yeah, it's the new one, because I think around turn 9 and 10, there would be a chicane there. And I think it's been taken out. So I think they've updated that. Let's just go into Spain, because that's another one that changed. It would be in the last sector, so it would be like turn 10. I think that was only like reprofiled, uh, rather than really changed. I think it has changed. It's a shame you can't go into the track with like a camera or a fisheye lens and look at it. That'd be pretty neat. Uh, so where's the other one? Abu Dhabi. Yeah, I think that's been changed, having a look at it. So yeah, I think like the chicane is like...
No, I'm, I'm looking the wrong way. Um, yeah, they've that's changed as well. So all the changes are in. All the changes are in. That's pretty neat. Uh, but yeah, apparently if we go Imlo, for example, I don't think we can have an overview of the weekend yet. No, but I'm a, I'm, I think the sprint races are not in the game like this year. Um, this is where you carry out your final preparations for the next race. We'll come back here later. I think that's because sprint races were added like a, a year ago. And Frontier have actually been developing this game for a couple of years. So I think that's why they, and they, they're probably, when they came in as a, a proper regulation, so to speak, uh, Frontier didn't have any time left to add them. So that'd be probably why. Uh, to be fair. Pedro de la Rosa still holds the lap record here, which is insane. He's held that for quite a long time as well, even with the new cars in 2017 being much faster. Schumacher's record in Australia and this record for de la Rosa, they haven't gone yet. So that's cool. I'll have a look at the driver pool in a sec. I, I think it's somewhere. I think it's like here. Uh, all parts fitted. This is all weekend prep that we don't really need to worry about yet. One of my favorite places. This is where the car builds happen and where we develop and store our car parts. Throughout Hi. the season, you'll want to make sure the team are working on upgrading components and that both cars are being kept in good repair. You can also use car analysis to compare our car builds to other teams. Hmm. That's nice that they actually do that. It's very similar to F1 2020, 21, 22, where you kind of had the performance chart uh, let's see where are our weaknesses well, apparently we can look at Schumacher's car specifically uh, oh, where oh my god dude this information is like bonkers okay so top speed acceleration is recommended for this circuit Crucial for circuit. Okay, so there's green is a crucial factor for the track and a blue is a recommended uh, Part for the track. Can we build anything? I Don't know where Haas's weaknesses are there. I don't think their weakness is in The power so to speak because I think they've got the most recent fry power unit So I don't think that's gonna be a problem engineer s and gearbox a few manufacturers apparently uh, you can change if you're a customer team, you can change your power unit. Um, manufacturers have said at the start of the season, Alpine, Red Bull, Ferrari, and Mercedes manufacture their own power trains so it cannot change manufacturer. So because we're Haas, we can change to uh, Red Bull or Mercedes at any point after the first season, which is a pretty nice trick. I like that. You can actually change an official team's power unit because you can't, you can't really do that in F122, you can only do that for your Mighty. So that's cool. 100% condition, obviously we haven't used it yet. Uh, so that's just the analysis thing, I, I guess. Uh, is there any like... You can actually Every hear the... Um, will continuously develop their cars over the season. So it's important you keep an eye on them. You can compare our team cars against any other team here, or even against an average of all teams. Hmm. If you want to drill down even further, you can compare performance of specific car parts too. Nice. Cool. Uh, change team. Okay, so grid average, yeah. How do we know which our weakest uh, things are? Show rank on the grid, E. Ah, here we go. Right. So, we haven't got anything for... Oh, it's just for Schumacher, but I'm assuming Magnuson's the same, right? Yeah. More or less. Uh, actually, actually, the changes are actually quite big to some degree. Or is that just me? We, um, nice no, cheat. Okay, fair enough. 
Uh, right, so our weakest asset right now is in high speed dirty air cornering. We're 15th in that regard. Hmm. Uh, and in high speed corners. Okay. Um. Design and manufacture new car parts. We will design and manufacture car parts. Okay, so we design to here. To start a project now, you'll need to commit money and engineering time. You'll be able to improve our car builds beyond their current performance. Okay. So, 10 available engineers. Cost cap balance of 114 million pounds. I guess that's how much we can spend. I think... New project. There are three different types of projects the engineering team can work on. We can design a new car part for use this season, manufacture copies of existing designs, or undertake research and develop our expertise for next season. Are you sure you want to start a new project now? Um, uh, possibly? <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't want to jump straight into the race if there's something we can actually do. I mean, I think for the first race, it's probably best just to go with the car you have and know where you are for, for data. So design is like new ones and then you can manufacture copies in case you're to get damaged, uh, front wings get damaged or whatever. I guess, and research unavailable till next season's regulation changes. And that's until April 18th. So they're already going to confirm the regulations then, I guess. Okay, you want to get started with a design project. These are car parts we can design and manufacture in-house. Each car part impacts different areas of the car's performance, but certain car parts will have a greater impact than others. Huh. You can also view our car performance by rank on grid. This is a useful comparison tool and lets you see how our performance compares to that of all the other cars on the grid. Show rank on grid is E, apparently. Take Oops. a look over the different car parts. The highlights indicate which performance areas they impact the most. Pick one that impacts the ratings you want to improve. Okay. Um... I don't know if the, anything we do now will be on the car by the Bahrain Grand Prix because we've only got 11 days. So we've actually got already some quantities in. Um, here we go. So let's see. We need to improve the high speed. I think the front wing will be something we have to do. Yeah, I think the front wing is going to be probably the thing we do first, if we do anything, because it seems to improve where we're weakest at, I think. Uh, rear wing, we're actually not too bad. The rear wing's not too bad, that will obviously be DRS. Let's, let's do a front wing. Can we get this on before the Bahrain Grand Prix? That's the question. The team's expertise in making new car parts improves with experience. So each new design is likely to be better than an older one. Just make sure to check the new design against the one currently installed. Okay. Testing is also an important step in designing a new car part. Our testing time is limited throughout the season, ah. and it's up to you to decide how much to commit to each design project. Okay. If you assign some testing time to this design now, you can see what effect it will have on the car part. Once you've taken a look, let's continue. Okay. So, computational fluid dynamics simulates airflow over a car part to test how it will perform in a real race. It improves the design's attributes and your team's expertise with this car part. Train's limited is limit is measured in mega allocation hours. Oh my lord. And every is 
is equal to a thousand hours of computer simulation or a million hours. Oh my lord. Testing is done in blocks known as aerodynamic testing restrictions. I never knew about this. Each ATR period allows how many hours the team can spend on aerodynamic testing. Well, this, this what, what we'll be doing even just now, right, would improve us quite a bit. Uh, I guess if we up and down these, it'll do better. Yeah, now we go up to seventh. Okay, so that would increase that. We have 6.9 hours remaining, and it's counting down as we go along. Okay. Uh, let's see. Are we getting any better at doing this, or what? I want to focus a lot on these, to be fair, because uh, obviously we need other parts too. I'm trying to see if increasing it makes this any better. Not really. So I don't think we have to really worry about it. Uh, seeing as this is our weakest asset, I'm probably like going to do 3.9. Because uh, I think we need that more. Actually, no, to be, to be fair. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Like... The new part's not even, like, making us better. Huh? Wind tunnel hours. Four. Eleven, fifteen. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this is making much of a difference. By the looks of it. But it says it probably will I really want to focus on like the high speed in particular uh, let's do blimey uh, I don't know what I'm doing here See, this is what I mean. It's going to be an absolute fail. Well, let's do... Let's do 10 hours. Because, I mean, even looking at that now, it makes us, like, instantly better. But these aren't improving. Am I doing the wrong thing? You can direct the engineering team to focus on specific areas of performance. F1 car parts are complex, and sometimes you'll have to sacrifice performance in one area to achieve gains in another. Okay. Over the season, we'll understand more about our car's performance, which will help you to guide the team's design focus. You can try altering the focus now if you like, or else stick with a balanced approach. When you're ready, continue with the process. Okay. Well, I think it's here, like high speed, is where we're worst at so i think we need to boost this up still ninth still ninth uh in fact changing this wouldn't actually make us that bad and it's here we need to go up so if we go up one if we go seventh because we don't want to we don't want to push too hard and then if we Actually, this is actually not too bad, I would say. You know, that, that puts us pretty much in the top 10 outright. Gives us a little bit lower high, low, high speed and high, um, higher brake cooling. Is that bad? I'm not, I'm not sure. Airflow sensitivity. We improved the dirty air cornering. Well, we can how well the wing conditions airflow for downstream car parts. Oh my god, dude. I mean, to be fair, it does say, like, a lot here, and we're not losing too much. I think we'll be fine just with that. I think. 
So, yeah. As a final step before the team oh, yeah, starts the cost. on this design project, you need to decide how many engineers you want working on it. You should also decide what approach they should take. Okay. Bear in mind these decisions will have an impact on the duration and cost of the project. Right. When you're happy with everything, confirm the project and the team will get started. Does it is there a way to tell how long it will take? Oh, 51 days, here we go. Uh 34 days, 51 days. 51 days in 10? What? Uh let's Okay, now that's going down. Uh, rushed, 25 days. Oh, blimey. Um, if, we, if we do half, because this is the only upgrade we're going to do, so maybe we should put... It ain't gonna matter because it ain't gonna come for Bahrain. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, we'll we'll leave that for now. Um, I know I really wasted a lot of time there, but manufacturer, I think we're okay here. Do we need to in warehouse to total four? Okay, so we've got like two spares, so I guess we're all right there actually for now. Uh, yeah, we'll leave that for now, because I'm not really going to focus on this save too much. I really just wanted to look around and see if I could understand it, and I don't. Absolute failure. Uh, can't watch development. This is oh. the warehouse. Isn't it wonderful? No. This is where we store any uninstalled car parts. We can also design and manufacture new and improved aerodynamic car parts in-house throughout the season and install them on our cars actually hold on every team has two cars one for each driver each car is made with different car parts six are identified car parts which are designed and manufactured by your in-house engineering team also three powertrain car parts oh oh my god dude this information um we should reach cars for next season's car. Okay. The engineering team have just finished manufacturing a suspension system. Oh, good. With a brand new design. Well-designed suspension is crucial to the aerodynamic potential of a race car. Okay. We always want the best components possible on our cars, so it's worth checking to see if we should install this one. So it was a good instead of the model we currently have. Sorry. It was a good thing that I did that. Because this one's already been done down here with the suspension, so we're going to do that right. now. All the available suspension designs are here to look through. Notice how both cars currently have the same suspension design installed. Mm -hmm. Check the new design at the top of the list. As each car can only have one suspension fitted, you'll want to check the stats of the new design to see if it's worth replacing the old one. Okay. Take the time here to compare the two designs. You may also want to pay attention to the stats that are crucial for the next race. Yeah. And see which suspension is more suitable for that circuit. Makes sense. Looks like this new design only has positive impacts on the car. That's great news. It's going on mixed car. We only have one copy of this suspension at the moment. So you need to decide which car to install it on. Sorry, Kev. It's going on mixed car. <laughs> Select the new suspension design and get it installed. Okay. Can't wait to see this in action on the race weekend. Right. Uh, this one. Uh, it's the wrong car one. Great work. That's the new that's suspension car. fitted. If you want to have more copies of this design manufactured, I've got an achievement. You can do so from here. Just remember those F1 mandated spending caps. Yeah. The official limit on how much we can spend on car development and improvement each season. If you don't want the team to manufacture anything right now, we should probably head back. This is this is going to take a long time for me to get used to. <laughs> that is for sure. Uh, let's see. Oh, that'll be in six days, just after the Bahrain Grand Prix. Can we get it? Oh no! Wait. 
The Bahrain Grand Prix is in 11 days, right? We could probably get this uh, car part put on Kevin's car as well, actually. Cash remaining about, I think it's about 15. Oh, that's, rema oh, that's remaining. We got... Uh, we're already making a little bit of a dent. It wouldn't be too bad. Let's see. Second car part, 11 days. What? Rushed four days. Four days takes 25. Uh, oh, okay. Quantity. Got it. Oh, I got I got you. Okay. Um, there. Trying to think. 11 days, that car part would take six. Yeah, that should be fine. I think we could do that. Let's make one for Kevin. Yeah, let's do it. It takes the team a while to manufacture a new car part. If you check your calendar, they'll have given you a delivery date. Right. Now, all you have to do is wait patiently and let the magic happen. Right. <laughs> okay, so it was a good thing we went in here, even though it took me a while. But we should... I look at the calendar. Yeah, the, ra the race is here. Right, so we can get this car part done and put it on Kevin's. So, that'd be decent. Sweet. Okay, uh, so that's all where, where the warehouse is. Okay, so I think next is the driver pool. This is where you'll find relevant information on the team's drivers and reserve driver, including their performance ratings and contract details. Okay. You can also scout for new drivers to make sure we have the best driver pairing we can. I think we already do. <laughs> so, all okay morale. Overall rating of 76. Is there a way to view the actual stat? Here, here we go. When a driver has development points available, you can use them to improve their performance. Highlighting a performance rating will give you more information on their effects. Okay. You can also they talked about this the in one of the, the streams. To look into the specifics of the driver. For example, before you leave, you might want to check out their current contract with the team. Okay. Uh, let's see. How is my boy doing? <laughs> so I guess we can't add anything yet. Growth potential average. That's, that's, they've done him dirty on that one. <laughs> I guess that, no, I guess that's correct. Aggression average. Hmm. Yeah, I'd probably say that was pretty accurate. So let's see. Breaking... Reaction 75, accuracy 80, control 75, smoothness 88. Which is weird because I, I think if you reduce tire wear while racing, this allows the driver to push harder and run longer stints on each set of tires. See, Mick was pretty good at this in F2. Uh, the, the reason he won the championship in F2 in 2020 was literally because he was able to keep Callum Eilat behind him with a flat spotted tire. So <laughs> that won in the that won in the championship that day. Let's see. Uh Data Birdie is 73. Is there anything on his race starts? Because his race starts should be awesome, but they're not. <laughs> and they really should be, because his race starts are pretty something he's good at. Vision of Data Poor Weather on track. This is this is doing him dirty right now. Because <laughs> he's a Schumacher, he should be instantly good in the wet. <laughs> Um, defending 68, uh, probably a little bit higher, should be a little bit higher. I, other than that, I think this really just checks out, to be fair. Contract length of one year, remaining contract 10 months, so it expires in less than a year, so you can renew his contract right now. I've, I guess we'll leave it, obviously, because I think the budget cap and includes in the salary and things like that for drivers, so you need to do that as well. If you terminate a contract by firing a staff member, this will cost. Okay, yep. Scout for replacement. We'll probably look at the replacement and stuff in a sec. Scout drivers, there we go. So let's have a look at Future Power there, actually. Adaptability 85. That's pretty decent, really. Um, 
Hmm. His attack ability is pretty good. To be fair. What's his contract? Remaining contract a year. Ouch. Well, we wouldn't be able to replace him if we wanted to. Cost to break contract. 209,000. Not bad. Not bad if we ever wanted to replace him. I think he's... The thing with Pietro is he didn't really get a chance to do anything when he took over in Sakir for Grosjean. Uh, so... I don't think we've got a good feeling, uh, like feel for him yet. Like we don't really know how good he'll actually be. He's been around for years. To be fair, I think he's been at Haas for like years already. I think. He's only 25. Reserve drivers are specifically trained to pilot and construct this car when called upon. They gain boosting experience when driving in the first practice session of a race weekend. Huh. Okay. So here's the driver pool then. So, here's some more so he's got a face. I think all the faces are probably updated by now. So, it's already telling them what team he's in. Is it MP Motorsport? Okay. Let's have a look through. So, we've got Givenazzi, who's at F1 as the Fry Reserve. Arthur Leclerc. I wonder if we should scout him. Because I remember Charles was actually at Haas. Um... In, in, before he came in, he was a Haas development driver, so actually having Leclerc, uh, Arthur, actually might be very, you know, realistic, I guess. So it might just be something we look at. Detailed scouting reviews a candidate's current morale, salary, any cash bonus is written into their contract, and how long they've been under contract at their buyout cost. Obviously, he probably won't have a buyout cost because he's not. Oh! Cannot race in F1. The driver cannot be contracted in an F1 team until they are over 18 and have competed at least two seasons in F2 or F3. Nice. Nice touch. Okay. So it's something we'll probably just have to scout him for. Uh, let's do detail. How many scouts have we got? We've got two. So let's have a detail on him. Because uh, that would make sense. Who else have we got? Let's uh, call it Callan Williams. He's at F2 at Trident. These are all real people. Pretty much, yeah. Uh... Oh my god! No! David Schumacher's in this. Oh my goodness! No way! David Schumacher's in this game. Wait. Wait. I wonder if I should do it. Should I put David as reserve for a laugh? Should we do it? I want to do it just to try it. Oh no. No, 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 no. Not for me. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Let's see if we can do this. I, I want to... Oh god. Uh, Can we... I want to do that so bad. I want to put David in this reserve. <laughs> Um, where is, um, here we go. So I'm assuming David, because he's like a free agent, he was at F3 last year, but I think he's like DTM now, but they put him in the game anyway. I don't want him to replace Mick, though. Reserve, there you go, okay. So, I wonder if we could do this. That would be sweet. Cost of break contract, that's not much, we could do that. Of one season. Should we offer him that? Open the negotiation, very high. Round not scouted. I don't, know how, I don't know how much to offer him. If you terminate his contract with a higher staff member, this will cost be paid to them. Okay. So, we don't want a signing bonus because he's only reserved. Uh, how much has Fittipaldi got on his contract? How much is he, are we paying him? Because... Does it, will it even tell us? Contract. 230 on salary. Um, so if we... Salary is 230. So if, if maybe we should offer David that. Obviously I'm not going to keep this safe. This is just to kind of like experiment. But I, I just want to, I want to do that so bad. And then you know what I want to do? I want to sign him. And then I want to put him in his like free practice one and have him and Mick doing it at the same time. That's what I want to do. 
Okay, so... 230. Uh, we'll, we'll give him that. We'll give him what? Oh, God. So we'll give it, we'll give him that. We'll give him what Pietro's having, because that makes sense. And we'll have it, we'll make it one season. Okay, let's do it. He's probably not going to accept. Oh, he did! Cancel proposal. Sweet! Let's do it. Just, just, just pretend. This isn't actually what I'm gonna do. I just want to do it. <laughs> Look at that. Look at it. Where is the shot? I've got to see this shot. Where is it? Here we go. Look. <laughs> Mick and David Schumacher in the same team. Dude, that's sick. That is great, dude. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put him in in practice one. He's only a 47, so he's obviously kind of garbage, um, sadly. Uh, but wow, that is amazing, dude! The Schumacher cousins in the same team. Oh my god, I am sold. I am sold, dude. He wanted a longer contract, but he accepted anyway. Dude, that is amazing. I, I, wow, I love this game, man. That is cool, dude. So here's Enzo Truly. This is the son of Yano Truly. Um, George Russell. I want to see... Uh, filter. Position. Reserve. I want to see the reserve drivers in F1. That's what I want to see. Oh, it doesn't say. What? I want I wanted to see all of them, but never mind. Oops. I guess that filter doesn't work. Show only bookmarked. Oh. Okay. Fair enough. Obviously that doesn't work. Um, wow, I can't I can't believe I just did that. I signed David Schumacher. Wow. I don't know how that's going to affect him. Like, will his... Obviously, if he runs in the sessions, he might, like, improve. But that's cool, because David is not actually in F3 this year, but they've put him in the game anyway. This is... that That is awesome. That is completely awesome, dude. That's that's cool. Wow. I want to go to practice right now, and I want to put him in the car. <laughs> I want to put him in car, too. <laughs> Alongside Kevin. Sorry, Kevin. Uh, I love you, man. But, um, yeah, David's going in the car. Just just for the lols, you know? Just for the lols. It's not just the fastest car that makes a team the best in F1. It's the people doing the hard work behind the scenes. Manage your staff from here from department heads to your pit crew and keep up to date on their performance. Okay. So, I guess, could we do this? Okay, we're probably not going to be able to sign him, but what I want to do is I want to see Race Engineer 2. You can swap drivers. That's cool. Low affinity with Kevin Magnussen. That's harsh. So he's, he's good affinity with Schumacher. Oh, look at that, dude. That's the legend. It's Gary Gannon, dude. That's awesome. Can't wait to hear him on the team radios. He's got a lot of affinity with... Funny fact, Gary Gannon actually used to be the race engineer for both Kevin Magnussen and Roman Grosjean with their time at Haas. That's a funny story. Uh, that's a fun fact, I should say. I want to, can we, um, I want to see, oh, so they've got like, so they've got actual like staff from F3 as well. Haha, <laughs> that's amazing, dude. I want to see if, yeah, here he is, his GP, uh, GP, um, 
Negative outlook towards your team, yeah. So he's not interested in uh, negotiations. But yeah, that's cool how you could do that. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? You know, to have one driver as Mick Schumacher's engineer, uh, like Gary, and then have GP as the second race engineer. That would be awesome. That would be an awesome team right there. That's the kind of thing I want to do at Ferrari. You know, bring Schumacher to Ferrari, bring Gary with him, and then bring in GP to be the second race engineer and probably sign Max or something. That would probably be a lot of money, though. Um, but yeah, that's, that's awesome how you could do that. I like that. I don't know really any of these guys, uh, these two. Uh, I know him because he, I think he managed Mazepin, but I'm not sure now. I don't even, I'm not even sure of that. Oh, so Gary's got remaining contract. Can we, um... So we can renew contract. Uh... Position car one. Uh, what's his current salary at the moment? Um... Hang on, what's the, co what's the cost cap got to do with this? Do we have the cost cap in this? I probably shouldn't have to do this because this isn't this isn't a save I'm gonna have. I told you this video was gonna be long because I want to explore. Dude, I gotta see this again. Dude, I gotta see this again. That, look, look, that, <laughs> dude, that is sick. That's absolutely sick. Both Schumacher's on the same team. Oh, if only Michael and Ralph were in this, that would have been awesome. The, like I said, the stories are all the teams endless that you can curate. From the staff buildings to the car park development centers. You can build new facilities or, if the team has the time and money, upgrade our existing ones. Facilities affect all areas of our team's performance. Team facilities impact every area of your team from the quality of your car to the rate of your drivers improve. Building a new facility takes some time and money and all facilities have a monthly upkeep cost you need to budget for. Refurbishing, basically. Existing facilities can be upgraded to improve their effectiveness. Upgrading facilities will increase their monthly upkeep cost. Facility upgrades are expensive and take a long time to complete. Facilities will degrade and their effect is reducing. Yeah. yeah. Over time, that makes sense. facilities will degrade and become less effective. So keep an eye on their condition. When this happens, We'll need to look at refurbishing or even upgrading that facility to get back to maximum efficiency. Yeah. New design project. I guess that's the thing we had earlier, right? Uh, race day car parts are manufactured. Test element car parts. Suspension simulator, CFD simulator. These are probably going to be like massive costs, and obviously, we've got the cost cap as well. Race simulator. How long will it take? Nine days. Money upkeep 40 pounds. I wonder if these factors in. I don't see the cost cap, so maybe these aren't factored into the cost cap. Oh no, cash remaining. Okay. So let's do that. Uh, Boardroom, hospitality area, helipad. First visitors stay in the hospitality suite. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool. I like these vistas as well. But we ain't got a memorabilia room. We don't need one yet. <laughs> we haven't got any wins. This is the boardroom. That's cool. Here you can delve oh, deeper into team finances and see our balance, as well as understanding information on income and rewards and the enforced spending caps we have to abide by. Yeah, that's. I'm really scared about cost cap stuff as well. Not only do I not understand it, any of it. I would say we've still got a lot of cost cap room. I think. Uh, yeah. 
Alright, so I think we can continue now. Oh, wait a minute. New design project. Oh, there we go. I, I got summoned to work. I just randomly clicked. It's no longer your first day. We'll have you on top of things in no Here we time. go. You'll continue moving through days this way until it's time for the race, which you can see in the upcoming events list. It's good to get in the habit of regularly checking that list. Okay. Let's take a look at what needs doing today. You have an alert in the top corner. Yeah. There's an important email awaiting a response, so you should check your inbox when you're ready. Looks like you've received a budget approval request. Most of the team's budget is decided by the board at the start of the season, plus whatever we get from last season's prize money and any huh. extra sponsorship revenue we earn. Okay. Had an idea for a season kickoff party to bring everyone together and celebrate your team. We'll need a budget approval if you want to go ahead with it. 10,000. Yeah, we can do that. I reckon that's a good decision. It should keep the team in high spirits anyway. Now that's dealt with, we can focus on our first Grand Prix of the season. The race weekend is still a few days away, so move forward when you're ready. With some other emails here. Realize they're a little too late to sponsor obligations. Sponsorship is a big source of income for all F1 teams, but that funding is a two way relationship. We usually sponsor deals that start a season, we need to offer obligations on our side, like creating merchandise and that feature our sponsors for hosting sponsor events in our factory throughout the season. I'll put a link to low to sponsor obligations. You must create merchandise for featuring your sponsors. Paying that just made. Okay. Obligations to secure sponsorship with Spank and W removed between seasons, but can be negotiated. Oh, so these are like fixed ones. Paying to that. Merchandise may request uh, requires an upfront cost, but selling it will increase your sponsorship income per race. Okay. Car park manufacturers pause for the day of the race session. Emergency car park purchases will still be available. Team must the team must host a sponsor event in your factory on the day of race session. You will have to pause all car manufacturing while this is hosting. Okay. And then that's for the factory. Number of event days 20. So that's almost the entire season really, isn't it? Sponsor event in the pick box during, oh my God. One or both of your drivers must take media appearances throughout the season. It's going to be to be responses, but the drivers won't gain a distribution. Okay. Fair enough. Okay, so these are things that are going to happen and you really can't change much about it. Fair enough. You know all those. <laughs> that is so cool to see, dude. And look, you see what you see what I mean? It actually put his face and the heart suit on like in it. That's so cool how that works. You can't see my mouse unfortunately, but um, for some reason. Notice the Schumacher's low morale, which will make it difficult to keep them when under their contract runs out. Unperforming in races and not getting along with the race engineer is the most common causes of low morale in drivers. Hiring talented new staff members keep keeping them paired with me as the race engineer to build our affinity. Building on upgrading facilities that improve, offering them a high salary and a large starting bonus if we renegotiate. Performing well on race weekends. Now why what it What's happened there? 
He even got the new car. <laughs> Nick, I'm giving you a new park, dude. What are you upset about? Damn. Benefits... Oh, okay, so it's benefit... Wait, I just did a freaking party thing and his morale's low. That's weird. Um... How do we fix that? <laughs> Can we fix that? Morale's well, is just... We're always low stomach with this one. I just said new contract proposal from the current team. We don't need to really sign him just yet. So we don't need to really worry about that. I'm just wondering why. Uh, I'm not sure. Poor kid. I wish I knew what I was doing. <laughs> I still can't believe David's in that. That is, that is cool, dude. Right, I think that's everything, so I think we can move forward. We're getting very close to race day now. Here we go. Just continue to do anything that's needed. In the future, you'll also want to decide on these actions yourself to ensure our team are continuously developing and improving. Oh, wait. We now have a low number of manufacturer suspension design. This is science to really car, car one. If we have an unlucky race weekend, we might run out entirely and be forced to buy an emergency replacement. I report to car one and how many parts we have at this current build. Feel free to visit the warehouse for yourself. I recommend manufacturing a new suspension for this design as soon as possible. I agree in the fact it would also help us to manufacture car parts faster if this happens. Oh. Oh, by the way, did uh, does that new part come in again, or what? Oh no, okay. Um, we might need another one. I might, I might do another one of those actually. Uh, where is it? Uh, suspension. No, that's not it. Manufacture. I'm already working on one for Kevin. <laughs> okay, let's continue. There it is. Okay. Suspension. Store on car two. There we go. So then we can manufacture another one. <laughs> Emergency. It will be like big cost. That'd be in five days, but we'll just have to hope that. Uh, Neither of them have a problem. Dang it, they're going to keep reminding me of that, aren't they? Barring testing behind us, we now know where the car stands versus the other teams. His name's Aaron. With an O. That's not too bad. We're not last. Should install a new suspension on one of our cars ready for the way to weekend. We have two parts of it design stored in the warehouse right now. But he keep Oh no, okay. Um yeah. Okay. Uh oops. I mean they want us to make another one. Uh and Mix sadly has been very prone to crashing. It's almost like what they're saying in that email. Like Mix gonna crash. Um let's continue on. So the race simulator is now updated. That gives me an achievement. Long construction period I had to for the race simulator is now complete. I've sent a full report on the facility and its benefits and attachments to this email. 
Claire. <laughs> She's gone from um, reporting to person in the team. Cool. Evacuation minutes. Experience gain of 20%. Carry on. There's always some final work to do before we can set off. Check your inbox for the race prep report on this weekend circuit. Okay, you have all the information you should need. Let's head to race preparation to see if there's any remaining tasks for us to complete. Okay. Actually tells you where to go, which is pretty neat. Right, let's this see. This is your race preparation area where you'll get the team ready for the upcoming race weekend. You can also find all the information you need on the circuit we're racing on here. One thing you'll always need to do before each race weekend is setting our performance targets. Right. These help us generate more potential rewards for the team. Uh, here. Here we've got the performance targets for this coming weekend. If we meet these, we'll gain extra revenue. Target reach Q3, that's going to be impossible in this car. On a consistent basis, anyway. Maybe she's reduced the pace of for the weekend, but person. I didn't guarantee the risk with the risk of the achieve them. So I guess these are the ones you like can't really change. For both the qualifying session and the race. Once we get we the fastest lap, we'll get an additional payout. And it won't cost the team anything if we don't meet them. Okay, so we don't have to worry about those. You can also decide to add targets here and offer our sponsors guarantees. These are a risk as we face a potential financial loss if we don't meet them. Mm. But if we do, we'll gain a much larger reward. Okay, if you want to offer a guarantee for this weekend and raise the team's potential rewards, now is your chance. Okay, um... Will we reach Q2 with at least one driver? We might. It'd be probably Kevin. That I think we could like do that. That feels like something we can achieve without too much difficulty. Yeah. The reward if we meet the guarantee is good, and the potential loss doesn't seem too bad either. Yeah, I'll take that. Okay, we're done here. Let's head back. Are we? I didn't do the other ones. Yeah, reach Q2. I think Kevin can do that. To be fair. Fastest lap and finishing position. Finishing position 12. Hmm. Again, this is all on Kevin. Unless Mick has an absolute wonder. Uh, I only say Kevin for qualifying because it was never Mick's strong suit. Qualifying is not really his uh, strength. Okay, so this is just strength. Qualifying position 14th. Okay, so they're ones you can't change. We can reach Q2 and that's a little bit extra. Okay. You've done everything needed, and the team can't wait to get started. It's time for the first race of the season. You can take some more time to look around if you like. When you're ready, let's get this show on the road. Yeah. Uh, did we fit that car to Kevin? We did, didn't we? Let's just, let me just check. Okay. Right. Cool. Finally, it's uh, the first race then. Um, yeah, let's do it.